Welcome back to I Did This Instead of Killing Myself, stand-up comedy podcast in Greenville, South Carolina. My name's David. It's the week of March 20th, 2023. Hope you enjoyed that intro song by the Nasty Hooks. Once again, Travis Thubbind has allowed us to uh, sample their music for the intro to the show. They're an awesome band. Check out everything um, about the Nasty Hooks and the link to their YouTube channel below. Oh boy, I hope you had a good St. Patrick's Day weekend. Um, hope you guys are uh, doing well, not too hungover. Um, we went out last night and hung out with a bunch of comics and stayed out super late. Even though I don't drink, I feel like I'm hungover from food and vibing. But yeah, hope you have a good uh, start to your Monday going already. We have a very good episode for you today. Um, vibing, good vibes. Um, I think that fits along with our guest today because she has awesome vibes. She's a pleasure to be around, always bubbly. Our guest today, Jackie Rose. Jackie Rose. So she has a saying, um, welcome to Jackie land. So we're about to enter Jackie land on today's podcast. That's like her, her world where everything's good, positive, fun. She has like colors that she associates with jackie land and uh you know it's just her carefree space and i think uh she treats audience to audiences to that anytime she's on stage you're kind of getting into jackie land i i really um I, I love jackie she's awesome um she's i describe her as a free spirit an outstanding karaoke performer and dancer she's one of those people that has no problem dancing when nobody's watching always great to hang out with her at and after mics you can catch her at sharkies uh often after mics downtown greenville she's also an extremely hospitable person on this episode she brought cornbread to the podcast i'm not used to having people bring dishes to uh to eat but i so appreciate it and she's kind of everybody uh in terms of cooking and gift giving uh she says it's because she's extremely lonely and she wants to make friends um but i think you know she's just a nice person um Born in Mon- a little background on uh, Jackie. She was born in Montgomery, Alabama. She lived in Panama City Beach as a teenager. She moved from Alabama to, um, uh, oh, she moved back to Birmingham, went to high school there. So she's got a lot of Bama background. And then she moved to Denver where she went to college. She's a psych major, English creative writing. Um, and she minored in Spanish, um, lived in Denver a while. And then she was spent um, some time in White Plains, New York, where she uh, did comedy. And uh, most recently, she moved to Greenville, late 2022. Um, and uh, yeah, by day, she's a copywriter for a mortgage company, like Don Draper and Mad Men. So she's doing creative stuff, and she's uh, hitting the mics really hard here in Greenville. Um, so yeah, really uh, enjoy getting to know Jackie in this episode. We talked about um, a whole bunch of stuff. We talked about mics in New York. Um, in Brooklyn, um, we talked about some Me Too stuff, comedy in general. I don't know. We talked about a lot of stuff. Hour and a half interview. You'll get to know all about Jackie and what she's been up to. Um, I think you'll enjoy the interview. About an hour and a half. Um, check out Jackie. She's awesome. Um, follow her at the links below, and I hope you enjoy. All right. Before the interview, though, here's what's going on this week in local comedy, the week of March 20th, 2023. Tonight, Coffee Underground, hosted by No Expectations Comedy. That's a seven o'clock show. Comics get there at six to sign up. Hosted by Travis Thubbin. Tuesday, Sharky's Pub, eight o'clock. Comics sign up at seven. Um, we have hosts uh, Callie Pasifume and Amelia Nelson. Um, also on Tuesday, we have the Art Bar in Columbia, hosted by Patrick Fowler. That's an 830 show. Also, on Tuesday, we have The Odd in Asheville. It's a 9 o'clock show hosted by James Herod. This Wednesday, 8.30, we have The Radio Room hosted by Adam Schulte. Also, on Wednesday, we have Tom Remond's Swamp Rabbit Comedy. Um, open mic at the VFW Post 9273 in Piedmont. 6 o'clock sign up, 6.30 show. Also, on Wednesday, we have The Disclaimer Open Mic in Asheville. That's an 8 o'clock show. Um hosted by Carrie Goff. On Thursday, Jokes Out Loud at the Comedy Zone, uh, 8 o'clock. 
um, hosted by Brandon Rainwater. $10 cover for audience members. Also on Thursday, we have the Kava Bar in Asheville. Stand-up comedy for your health, a show put on by Justin Blackburn. He's hosting. I will be featuring. And your headliner, Alexis Ramirez. I'm so happy I get to open for Alexis. I get to drive her to the show and then open for it's. I'm just kidding. This is going to be great. It's my first time uh, doing a book show up in Asheville. Very excited. Um, come on up if you're close or in Asheville. We'll love to see you guys there. We're going to have fun. Friday, all jokes aside, at Habiba's in Greenville. This is a 9 o'clock show hosted by Dante Anderson. Um, and this weekend at the Comedy Zone, one of my favorites, Dave Landau. He's a Michigan native, very funny guy. Used to be on the Anthony Camilla radio show and uh, just a savage, funny dude. He's um, got two shows on Friday, March 24th at 7 and 9, and two shows on Saturday at 6 and 9. Tickets available at GreenvilleComedyZone.com. All right, that's it for local comedy. Hope you guys have a great week, and I hope you enjoy my interview with Jackie Rose. Here it is. You fat. You fat motherfucker. <laughs> Went in D2 championships and shit. Oh, yeah, dude. Sports. D2 GLIAC championships. Proud of you. Thank you, Jackie. I know no one told you that in Jackie, all these years. Jackie just called me a fat fuck. <laughs> And I'm going to eat fat fucker. the eat, cornbread. Eat the cornbread I made <laughs> you. You eat that cornbread, you fat you, fuck. You eat that, you fat piece of... <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's really good. Yay! I'm glad you like it. Yeah. We can put the recipe in the in the YouTube description. Really? Yeah. You have it? You... Yeah, I can send it to you. I don't know how many of our viewers cook. It's super I can't, easy. So I just assume that well, people who watch can't. But yes, let's put the recipe yeah. In the I'll I'll cook for people if they'll be my friend. You know. Do so you want to be friends? Yes. Okay. I'm so lonely. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Dude, that's really good. Yay! I'm glad you like it. Yeah. There is actually a, a harrowing series of events that led to that really yeah because okay so that's a crowd pleaser i make the cornbread casserole all Mm -hmm. the time um but i made it this morning i made one batch for you one batch for me and you know because i was gonna eat it over the course of several days Uh uh-huh now like two days i eat a whole (laughs) fucking pan of myself but um (laughs) yeah um but then i tasted it and i was like something's wrong and i realized the corn i used wasn't sweet enough and I'm like, God fucking damn it. Uh-huh. So I went to Harris Teeter and uh-huh. I got better corn and I like remade it. What? Wait, you yeah. had it, you had pans already made with the yeah, other corn? Yeah, and I, yeah. And it just wasn't sweet enough. And I'm like, you know, it's David. He'll eat it. He'll <laughs> still like it. But I was just like, I would have. No, I know you What'd would you do have. with the other pans? Did you give it to a homeless guy I, or something? I gave it to my neighbor. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I have this extra cornbread. <laughs> you want this cornbread? And he took it. And so, so now he might let me pet dude, his I dogs. Feel, oh, my gosh. What if he hates you now because it wasn't sweet enough? No, he'll, he's a man. He'll eat it. And well, he'll, he's probably so in I'm love not, with me now, which is a problem. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not a man? Um, well, I have a, I'm, barely. <laughs> I am not. I'm, barely. I'm not a David. man. <laughs> You're not, a, not man. a man. But you can cook. I think that makes you a real woman. Yeah. Although, is that because sexist my tits to sure that? don't. They're way too small. <laughs> Dude, don't, I'm barely a woman. Why are you nagging yourself? Because right? no. it's fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, is it sexist to say that a woman is only a woman if she can cook? Uh, don't ask me because I'm not a great representation for womankind. No. I'm barely a woman. <laughs> I think you're a woman. If this cornbread is any judge. <laughs> well, if my big hairy balls have <laughs> anything to say. Oh my gosh, Jackie. <laughs> Imagine like... having just balls and a clit. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's me. What did you say? I tucked. <laughs> you tucked. I tuck. Do you know what tucking is? Tucking your balls underneath your legs. So it's a yeah. Do you know about drag queens? Yes. Yeah. So what they do, it's like origami, but they tuck like their male parts under, mm-hmm. and it's like origami, and they can make it look like a pussy, <gasps> so that a a a man yeah can be in a g string and and it looks like yeah a vagina, and it's. It's an art. Yeah. Do, you, do they tape them? Yes. They tape them back? They tape. They use 
duct tape, WD-40. <laughs> There's probably some drills and some screws Yeah. involved. <laughs> Gorilla glue. You know what I've heard? Prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they talk to God. <laughs> I'm just I'm just they kidding. They talked to RuPaul's I'm just gone. kidding. I'm just kidding. No, of course. Uh, I've actually heard of little kids. Like, uh, I'm not saying I did this, but like <laughs> little kids. <laughs> my friend Kelby told me about this. When like little kids got out of the, the bathtub uh, just to play around, they'd tuck their wieners behind and then like walk like this and be like, <laughs> I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now I remember weird? when being a little kid. Kelby Tidy told me he did that. I discovered my my I'm, clitoris as a little gal. How old are you? Too young. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I thought I was a boy because I was <laughs> I was like I thought it was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, Mom, I'm a boy, and she's like, No, you're not. Uh, did and she explain I'm, anything else? No, my mom didn't talk to me. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I'm a boy. And she's like, no, you're not. <laughs> wow. But okay, so she just clarified and confirmed. Yeah, this. that was that was a great convo. <laughs> <laughs> this is an Genitals interesting way to... Genitals are so weird. They are so weird. So the thing about sexual um, development, like in the womb, when you know about like how <clears throat> when a fetus is developing in the womb mm -hmm. and how sexual development goes i mean it starts with the chromosomes yep. and then those code for certain hormones yep. and there's primary sexual characteristics like mm. the genitalia right and then there's secondary sexual characteristics like tits and whatnot right and um it's so complicated that there are so many things that can possibly go wrong yeah. That when you know anything about the development of a fetus in the womb, it's like, no wonder there's intersex or trans people or, you know, it's not that surprising. Or me, whatever I yeah. am. It is interesting. Yeah. Because there's a lot of uh, uh, development that happens. Like a little baby embryo kind of looks like a, a seahorse. Or they look the same as like all other animals, like until they start. Like don't, don't, <laughs> don't baby embryos like have like a tail? Yeah. Before, and the tail goes away. Um, yeah. And they look like a dolphin for a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And they look like, yeah, little. Somebody made a joke about this, like Italian food. They look like a little thing you could oh, eat. Oh, yeah. Like lasagna. La yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, everything looks like lasagna cook, cook, on the inside. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I remember when I discovered my balls for the first time. Yeah. Tell me about well, actually, it. Actually, I don't remember it, but my mom and dad told me about this i was in the bathtub just playing and then i i got very excited that there was a ball in there like your ball like, or yeah okay. my ball. well i have two but i think <laughs> don't i don't brag yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah I was, the way they tell the story is i was like oh there's a ball in there and i got very excited because i thought it like we could take it out and play with it and i said i wanted to take it out and play with it because it you know yeah. it's about the same size as a super ball and i really like super balls um so yeah I, my folks thought that was they got a kick out of that so they tell that at every family reunion no like, we no. forgot all his other accomplishments but the time he <laughs> played with his ball <laughs> <laughs> just one yes uh yeah no that was like a repressed memory i just thought of because of i'm this so glad i triggered that yeah it's good nice do you know what super balls are no you don't i re I remember they're the bouncy ones that yeah they're like yeah they're just rubber balls and you can bounce them super high cool you've never heard of that no what no dude your childhood was rough oh super Bowl. oh Hmm. Okay, never mind. We won't talk about Super Bowls then. No, nah, I mean, no. we can. We can, I mean. There's not a lot else. To, I, I don't know. There's not a lot else to go off of Super Bowls. But anyway, this is a fun start to the combo. I like it. Well, you know, there's plenty of time to fuck it up. Yes. So Jackie. Jack, David. Jackie Lynn. David, right? Yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Shut up. So Jackie, how did you find your way into the Greenville comedy scene? Well, I'd been doing comedy before I moved to Greenville. 
And then part of the reason why I moved to Greenville is because I knew that it would be a lot more accessible for me to go do some more open mics and also just like go out and, and dance and have fun. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, yeah, it was, I, when I moved here, I was like planning, like, you know, once I get settled, I got to start doing some fucking open mics mm-hmm. and actually do it regularly. Right. Where did you move from? Uh, White Plains, New York. That's right. Which is, you know, 45 minute train ride from the city. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I periodically would go into like Brooklyn and do open mics there. But uh-huh. going into the city, especially like alone, I was like a woman. Well, I, um, it was, it was Sketch. just not accessible. You know, it was harder to be, there was less motivation to be like, oh, go do a mic. Because it's one thing if you live a mile from downtown and you go and you bomb. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing of like, I spent all day going into the city to fucking bomb. And then I go back. Yeah. You know, so it was just, um, I don't know where I was going there. (laughs) No, no, um, no. I'm I'm tracking. So the open mics you did were in Brooklyn primarily when you did go? Yeah. And I... Um, I actually started the first time I did comedy was back in Denver. Okay. But there was like a two year gap. And then mm-hmm. I, I did, you know, Brooklyn a, a handful of times. And mm-hmm. then, but it's, it was hard living in White Plains. Yeah. I did not belong there. <laughs> Absolutely not. White Plains. There's a okay. White Plains reference in Seinfeld. Yes. And Have you, you, so White Plains is where everyone from the city, they move out to White Plains to, be in the suburbs and and escape the okay. city. Okay, that's where they go to like settle down and have a family and a picket yeah. fence and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's Westchester County, which is one of the most expensive counties in New York, mm-hmm. and it fucking sucks. You're a baller, dude. It absolutely not. I was miserable. There's nothing to do. It's hella expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lived right by the train station, so I'd hop on the train and go into the city, but it was still. How long a ride was it on the train? 45 minutes, but that's the Grand Central. And then from there, you get on the subway to Brooklyn, which was, you know, it was a trek. So you're like an hour plus into a commute. Yeah, and that's fine, but it's like everything's so expensive. And I mean, the money's one thing, but the time of like, this is a whole ass Saturday that I spent to go to a mic versus being here. It's like five minute drive. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. For and sure. it's like, oh, I bombed. Okay, I can just go to <laughs> fucking Sharky's the next night and make a bunch of abortion jokes. Yeah, and get exactly. a bunch of laughs. Yeah. Um. So, did you ever watch Mad Men? Um. Not really. Okay, I've seen mind. a couple episodes. Well, I know John Hamm. I know the. I know the premise. I know. Oh, the you gist. know him personally. I know about the. Sh- yeah. John Why Hamm were y'all in the same frat? Because he shut was- up. <laughs> Because he was no, he, John Hamm's a talented actor, but he has some skeletons in his closet. Does he? Yeah. He's got some me tooable offenses. He hazed the fuck out of someone. What did he do? In a frat. What did he make him do? Tell um, the story. I don't know, but he was, I just know that the person that he was involved in with the, allegedly, uh, was, um, you know, severely hurt. Hazing is fucking stupid. Yeah. Why, why do you guys do that? Right. So what about John Hamm, though? I love Mad Men. Uh-huh. He's a very talented actor. Uh-huh. Mad Men's my favorite drama, for sure. Interesting. Okay. Um, but Mad Men, so for those who watch Mad Men, um, where Betty lives, mm-hmm. that's in White Plains. Okay. Is Betty... His his first wife. January Jones? Yes. Dude, she's a smoke show. Oh, my God. I liked her on Last, Last Man on the- Earth. I don't know if you've seen that show. That's a Will Forte show. And she was... Uh, Will Forte is so underrated. Oh, 100%. He's such a weirdo. Will Forte fans. That's a good wreck. Last Man on Earth. But uh, anyway, so January Jones's character in Mad Men lived in White Plains. Yes. That makes sense. It seems to. She seems to be able to play like the nice housewife or something. She seems like that type of actress. Oh my God. She's so good in that show. Okay. I'll have to watch Mad Men then. Oh, you absolutely. Is that show over? Are they still making episodes? No, it's been over for like over a decade, but (laughs) I've I've rewatched it multiple times. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Okay, gotcha. It's so fucking good. Also, I'm a I'm a copywriter and it's about advertisers. Yeah. So so you like think you're part of like the show. Absolutely. I'm like (laughs) 
I'm pretty much Don Draper. For You're sure. Don Draper. You're a copywriter. Yes. That's cool. Indeed. I wanted to ask about the open mics again one more time, though, in, in Brooklyn. So, like, when you did this, how, like, would you see the same comics when you went? Like, was there, like, you know, people that you could become friends with? Or was there so many comics and it was just a random group and so many mics that it was more random of, like, who you'd end up seeing? Um, so I went to um, Eastville in Brooklyn, which is a fabulous place. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, let's see, there, there, there was pretty much the same core group of people for the open mics. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of talented people. Kylie Vincent is incredibly talented. She's an amazing um, uh, female comedian who's done like this one woman show, uh, I think called bird woman and she's really taking off so you'll probably bird woman's taking off yeah so she's yeah. she's great um but i will say so but that was just open mics so uh-huh. because you know that the having you know real professional comedians at a certain venue is going to be a different vibe than the open micers sure. who show up mm-hmm. um but as far as the open mics go i mean there are some hilarious motherfuckers but I will say uh, at the open mics that I went to, and this isn't about Eastville in general, but um, the open mics that I went to, most of the time, I mean, there'd be hilarious motherfuckers, but there'd at, at least be two or three people who bombed so bad <laughs> that you're just like, give up, kill yourself. Uh-huh. Don't You don't even deserve to pay right. to be on stage. Right. I mean, just worse than crickets. Yeah. And they would bomb so fucking bad. And thank God for those motherfuckers because then I would go up and whether I bombed or did okay, it's like if I get a couple of chuckles, at least I didn't do as bad as that guy. What were these people doing? Were they like doing offensively bad stuff where the audience not only didn't laugh, but they were like, oh, geez. Just not funny jokes. I yeah. Mean, just, okay. Not funny. That's fine. You know when someone does a punchline and it's like, oh, they thought for months <laughs> that that was hilarious. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, uh, common occurrence. Yeah. Yeah. So, but those <laughs> oh. are the Eastville open mics, and Eastville is like an establishment. There's been like I don't. Was there any audience at these mics? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there'd be in the afternoon, there would be the, the open mic. So it's mostly comedians. And then in the evening, there'd be an actual audience mm-hmm. and a mixture of, the, of like professional comedians and open micers on a professional rotation. Professional comedians and open. But these are the open mic nights. Like I'm not, I'm not talking about the, you know, I'm not. Book shows. Yeah. The actual shows. Like I didn't go to those because I'm, I was an open micer. Yeah. Um, but it was really interesting because I, I remember the specific day where I went there in the afternoon and it was all open mic comedians and it was mostly guys. Mm-hmm. And so being a woman, uh-huh. you know, I went up there, I just s- said a bunch of self-deprecating shit yep. and I got them to laugh. Per use, yeah. Na- you nag like, like you do. It's yeah. so easy. Yeah. They love, yeah. open mic male comedians love it when a woman goes up and just talks shit about herself. Like yes. It's so easy laugh easy yeah laugh. but um then that same day so i came back for more of like the more established show where there's more of a mixed crowd more mm-hmm. diversity yeah and i started off with the self-deprecating shit and then i went into um you know i know it gets old saying the self-deprecating shit but the guys at the last open mic loved it and then i went into a bunch of feminist shit uh, talking shit about men and they lo- and i don't know and that they was loved pretty, it yeah yeah okay. that was pretty fucking cool yeah um yeah men suck dude i mean yeah it, people <laughs> suck but especially men yeah <laughs> but um mm. But yeah, I mean, I just went there a handful of times. Like I went there as as much as I could, but still just being, you know, an hour away. It's yeah. just. So this kind of sounds like you moved to Greenville for comedy. Uh, <laughs> sure. I've never heard of that before. Actually, yeah. maybe I have heard of a New York person or two moving here. For... Well, my family is all spread around the South. Okay. You know, and. Um, so the family thing. Yeah, that too. And, you know, I moved here after a breakup, so. Ooh. And how long have you lived here? Because you're pretty new. I moved here, so it's 
um, February 16th. So November, December, June, three months. I can't do November. Yeah, yeah. I moved here late November. Three months. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the thick of it. It's good. Yeah. Um, well, that's really cool. It's awesome that you started uh, comedy in New York and then came here. I mean, how many, how long had you been doing open? I know you probably didn't get out like regularly a lot, but when did you start doing stand up? When was your first time on stage? My up very there? first time was back in Denver. Okay. Oh, that's right. You said yeah, that. I know it's confusing. Yeah. Um, but it was my senior year of college and um, I just started thinking of jokes and I was like, this would play well on stage. Mm -hmm. And so I just went to the Lion's Lair, which okay. is um, a dive bar off of Colfax in mm -hmm. Denver. And I got wasted drunk. <sighs> And did okay. Nice. Yeah. And so I, that's when I very first started. But there was like a couple year gap and, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, then just a handful of times in, in New York when I lived there. And then now I'm just try I'm trying to hit at least one mic a week. Okay. You know. One mic a week. You could up that. I can. Yeah. 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 But I might do like three mics one week and then. I got you. And then none. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just doing it for fun. I love it. I yeah. Love it. Um, so where did you go to college out in Denver? University of Denver. University of Denver. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I studied psychology, English, creative writing with a minor in Spanish. Oh, okay. I minored in Spanish too. Oh. Um, verdad? Como estas? Es verdad. Si. <laughs> How soy, are you? Or soy fea. Or soy <laughs> bien. She just said she's ugly. That, no, it's very done. That's not true. <laughs> Eres bella. Muchísima you are. Gracias, señor. You are beautiful. <laughs> y también su comida es muy sabrosa. <laughs> I just said also her food is very yummy. <laughs> I don't know how to say cornbread in Spanish. But I'm going to eat the rest of it. Know. Voy a comer pan todo. Pan de maíz. <laughs> maíz. Oh, pan de, ma de maíz. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing about Spanish. Rico. You, you can Suave. sometimes use circumlocution yeah. to discover what the actual word is. So I don't know if this is interesting to people, but I'll say it. Uh, yeah, you just said pan de maíz, which is bread of corn, which is cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> cornbread. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so funny that um, right wing, like racist who talk to, <laughs> yeah, they're hilarious. But when they're like... Speak English when there's like a like someone from Mexico mm -hmm. who's speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. and they're like speak English, and it's like Mexicans are already speaking the colonizers' language. Like Spanish is already the That's colonizers' true. language. That's true. <laughs> yeah, because the Spain the Spain came yeah Spanish. They came from Spain. All the conquistadors colonized the shit out of Mexico, and then they. Like, Ban Spanish people are just white. Like, they're yeah. speaking a white man's language. Like, what right. more do you want? What was the language before Spanish? Like, Aztecian? All sorts of... Um, there's Nahuatl, which Nahuatl. is a type of... I, I think that's as. So, Aztec is Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then there's... I mean, there's Inca. Then what was that fucking other one? I don't know. But Inca is around, like, Peru. Okay. And then Maya... But before those, those were like the three major South American native um, empires. Mm -hmm. But before those, I mean, there were like dozens. Yeah. I mean, there's like Tainos. Mm -hmm. I, there's just so, there's so many. In, I mean, there's so much culture that was. What did they speak down in Peru? Was that Peru. Incan? Yeah, Peru, they were, they were the Incas, but. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it changed before the Incas. There were other tribes. And yeah, whatnot. I saw this documentary on Netflix recently about this guy who is investigating ancient civilizations. And I don't know how to eradicate them. How to eradicate? Completely. Well, they're gone. bro. They're already <laughs> eradicated. Yeah, but all memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, they were like discovering these rock formations that supposedly um like they couldn't have been like they aged out like way older than anything we have on historical record. So like there may have been advanced civilizations before the commonly understood historical record. And I thought that was pretty interesting. The only thing that made me annoyed by the documentary was they definitely hyped it up like uh, 
like with the transitions and sound effects and like it's just like this 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 white guy kind of old dude kind of nerdy and they just do these zoom ins and this it was just it was like ancient aliens or something where they like hype it up maybe more than it otherwise no i love that shit yeah I'm like keep keep me interested well that's about all i got on this but uh anyway i think this guy was on rogan a couple of times too so Bruh. obviously factual oh yeah yeah so you know that back in the old days like before satellites you know people used to fuck like crazy <laughs> like i just have a feeling what do you mean before satellites i don't know i just feel like before modern technology like the yeah. sex was probably really fucking good the sex was better before modern technology yeah like when what makes you think that when i just feel like if you think that the sun is god i don't uh-huh. know it's like oh someone's watching us like i, I don't know like i just feel so like they'd want to have sex out in the sun i outside. just feel like when you're less cerebral or like not worrying about like your followers yeah or when money is less of a I don't know, less of a concept when mm-hmm. there's no such thing as like investing. Yeah. I just feel like, or, you know, before AIDS, <laughs> that probably yeah. helped too. But I yeah. just feel like people probably fucked like crazy, like when they were more yeah. animalistic and whatnot. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Because if you're more of an animal mindset, your only goal is to procreate. Just primal. Yeah. I just want to get my DNA to pass on to the next generation. Now you're thinking about like... When I have a lot of helpers for the... Our little tribe. Yeah. And also, you know, maybe you don't want to be pregnant. Well, you know, you give birth. It's probably going to die anyways. So uh. just fucking <laughs> bust a nut, you know, <laughs> just go crazy. Yeah. Or just feed Nothing the weak matters. ones but now, to the predators. If you get pregnant and carry it to term, it's probably going to survive. That's yeah. no fun. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I just feel like back in the day. Yeah. It's kind of, there's a Louis C.K. joke about that. Oh, uh, yeah, the shitty babies just died. You just had another one. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, he said he had two great grandbrother, or great, I think it's great grandfathers or like whatever a great grand uncle would be named Geza uh, because the first one died and then they had another one and they just named him Geza again because that's just what happened. Yeah, but now there's we only save, like five names. Anyways. Right, do but you know, now we save every shitty baby, and he says the shittier the baby, the bigger the effort, and we have to save them all. Well, I mean, you, which is good, you do, we because save the baby the might its body might be all fucked up, but it might have a Stephen Hawking brain, right? So you got to put that shit on life support. Get him a little wheelchair. It might cure cancer with its cerebral brain, yeah. with its frontal cortex. Mm-hmm. You can have nothing going on for you and just be solid frontal cortex and and make some shit happen nowadays yeah back in the old days you couldn't do that yeah absolutely um, it's not a bad life you know it's so what a, do you what do you think about louis oh i love louis i love louis too that he masturbated in front of women i don't is that yeah. what you're asking yeah is it should he be forgiven i, I mean think i don't know it seems kind of done his time seems kind of fun to me just kidding i wouldn't do that i wouldn't do that the thought uh, w- of walking in on it, uh, walking in, it's one thing if there's like mutual masturbation going on, yeah. but walking in on uh, a grown man <laughs> masturbating <laughs> sounds yeah. horrifying. Horrifying? Oh yeah. my God. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I wondered if it was, cause he, they said he asked permission, but I wonder if it was like, you know, they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then they're like, holy shit, he's actually doing it. What do we do now? Yeah, you just stand there. But also, he because he was powerful, they felt like they that they couldn't say no. That's yeah. So that's messed up. I mean, <laughs> I think a, I think a lot of people do. There's a certain spectrum of certain things where it's like that's not okay, uh-huh. but that can be forgiven. Yeah, you know, just do your time. But what he did. Um, as opposed to people like James Franco, allegedly, whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't he, know what James Franco did, but dude, James Franco was a creep. Continue, continue with your Louis. But what friend, Louis but. did is, right when the allegations came out, he had an open letter that coped to it. Yeah. Um, that just said, 
these allegations are true. Yep. And then he was just destroyed. Yeah. And that set a horrible precedent of like, if you do anything sexually, you know, creepy. Yeah. And then you admit to it. Yeah. If you confess, your career is over. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I'm just like, you know, I mean, confess and then yeah. maybe there can be some, you know. Yeah. Maybe it may, what what's a like correctional facility? What's the word? Um, you can be rehabilitated yes. back into the community. Yeah, but once Louis did that and his career was over, everyone else who got me too, they were like just deny, 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 deny. 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 Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and then we have yeah, that kind of sucks because if there are degrees to it, you'd like for the person to be able to like be honest about it. Yeah, if they did do something shitty, and if there actually was a change, there. I, I mean, I'll be honest. There's, there's n people who, you know, have done creepy stuff that it's like, you know, I still, I don't necessarily think they're bad people. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't make it okay what you did, but like, let's learn. Yeah. But like, they don't teach consent in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all um, even. Do they now? They should now. I don't I'm know. Not my high school. No. <laughs> I didn't teach my teachers that. Yeah. I had huh. this. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> Bro. Bro. Well, yeah, the Louis thing. I don't know. It is It is actually shitty. I didn't mean to laugh no, about no, it. No, you're fine. It's, it's like, I don't know who he is as a person. It's hard to really know somebody's like actual, their heart. <laughs> That's so cool. You know, it's hard to know. Uh, who any of these people are? They're celebrities. You have to go off of whatever spin you're getting or they're giving to you. Um, I know Louis was. He kind of seemed like more of a shithead when he was younger. Like he was always like kind of. A lot of comedians are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a certain line where it's like you can, if your art is good enough, then I can ex I can still enjoy it. And excuse a certain level of behavior, mm -hmm. but then if it if that behavior becomes bad enough, then it just ruins the art for me. Yeah. Versus like if your art isn't that great and you do something not so great, yeah. Then I don't want to, you know. For sure, I I like to also be able to distinguish like if the person is like <laughs> a sociopath. Like completely, like they're not remorseful. They're just saying they're remorseful. Because like I have run into things where like the per I I feel like um the behavior is like part of like the, their brains just fuck. They're like a, a manipulator and like bad news. Then there's probably never any hope for them to like change. So and, what's your experience with sociopaths? Um. Well. I don't really want to get into it too much. Okay. Um, it's just, I don't know. I've had people I've known before where you think you know the person and then something comes up and then you're like, holy shit, I totally misjudged this and there's no like redeeming thing about it. Um, and I don't, and, and once that trust is broken, it's like, and I've never been molested or anything. That's not like what I'm talking about. What? I've never been molested or anything. That's not really what I'm oh, talking about. Oh, I wasn't asking, but... <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean though there, like, there's yeah. a mistake and like a pattern of like this is really bad like this is you know especially when it comes to women you know and some of that stuff i actually think shouldn't really be you know forgiven i guess i don't know yeah i don't know what i'm saying because i'm talking no you know, no you're was... talking like once it becomes a pattern it's less easy to forgive yeah 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 because sure. it's like you knew what you were doing yeah yeah. Here's what blows my mind about abusers and uh -huh. especially narcissistic abusers. Right. When you think about the mind games that go into manipulating someone, and especially a smart person, uh -huh. you know, it, it takes to like pull those puppet strings and to have this whole act and to keep this person going for months and years and, and fuck with them. You would think that, that that manipulation takes a certain level of intelligence. But yeah. so often you find out that narcissistic abusers are fucking 
idiots. Yeah. They don't even know the difference between your and your, or there, there, and there. <laughs> and yet you were able to fucking induce an identity crisis in me, you yeah. fucking dumb dumb. Are you speaking from experience? Yeah, I see this all the time yeah. where guys who, especially, you know, not me personally, um, but especially women who are stuck into abusive relationships with yeah. men. I yeah. mean, these men, it's like, how can you function? Like, how do you even go grocery shopping? Yeah. And yet you're able to toy with these people's minds. And it's scary because you realize that it, it is an evolutionary adaptation of <sighs> some people who are fucking idiots are capable of manipulation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, if they were, you know, I mean, I think it's if they're smart. It's mm -hmm. like. I can so accept that. One person that uh, did jump out to me is uh, Chris D'Elia. I know, dude. I used to love his comedy, by the way. I know. That's the fucked up part, too. If somebody's really funny and like you like their stuff. But when that story came out, I didn't look into it that much. And it kind of felt like maybe they were people trying to like get attention, maybe. And maybe it was just like a borderline age thing. But... Beyond that, I didn't look into it. And then I saw a documentary they put out about it. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, my God. The documentary was messed up. And it's called The Chris D'Elia Problem, if yeah. anybody wants to watch it. Is that what it's called? The pro yeah. Chris D'Elia Problem. And it is captivating, man. It They have, like, testimony from girls that he supposedly manipulated. They have recorded conversations of Chris and uh, some of the girls that they tried to, like, set up kind of like a sting sort of and it felt like chris maybe knew he was being recorded but the things he was saying and how he was saying them this the tone of manipulation was so obvious like where he was like appealing to their uh emotion and their empathy by saying like this is really hard like threatening to kill himself saying like you know you you got to like go back on what you're saying here. Cause like uh, it'll help me with all these death threats and shit that I'm getting. Like he made it about himself. Like the narcissism that was f just flowing through the conversation. I was like, bro, bro to just see him like be like all sheepish and like trying to play on her emotion. I was like, bro, this guy, I, I don't think I'll ever like see that dude the same. Like I don't, you can't really find him funny anymore. Even it's like, yeah. I don't know, what were your thoughts on? I'm his, sorry, I'm going off on this. Part. His art was not good enough to justify his behavior. Once yeah. his behavior, his art was great, and then his behavior, once it all came out, it's like, oh, not good enough to justify his art. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean that's just typical. Uh, when it first shit. came out, I was just like, I didn't really know how to process it, <clears throat> and then I heard about, you know, him whipping his dick out several times and just yeah. oh gosh no the f okay this one was funny though he had two <laughs> girls in his hotel room at one point allegedly um <laughs> two girls in his hotel room <clears throat> sorry and he was trying to like set up a threesome with them and they thought they were going to like a cool hollywood party yep i remember this but yeah. it's just him and a plate of shrimp scampi and then they're like, this is weird. We're going to leave. And then he pulls down his fucking like sweatpants with his dick out. And it's just like, you sure about that? Like as if, as if <laughs> it's like, you know what? As a woman, I wasn't into this. But then <clears throat> when you whipped your dick out, that's when I changed my mind. Like how fucking cocky and arrogant do you have to be to think that your dick is that special <laughs> out of your sweatpants? <laughs> like, <laughs> you sure about that like yeah i can smell shrimp scampi and not a party going on here oh my gosh yeah it's messed up yeah. <laughs> but i mean dude it's hard it's really hard i'm sure his dick was hard it's, i don't know yeah ah. i'm sure <laughs> you sure about like i haven't you sure about that like just whip your dick out yeah the thing that <laughs> not even the thing that messed me up too about that documentary is when they they showed the detail of the girls that got the uh heart tattoo and he he made sure they all got the same one and it was like a heart with a c and a d for crystalia on it i was like dude it's uh it's branding yeah that's grooming. That is that is messed up stuff. 
it's an identity thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like I'm gonna make thing. you identity. Yeah. I own you. Yeah, your identity is dependent on me. Yeah. Right. So, I think I don't know. What are you looking for? Got it. Oh, the vape. Okay. Gotcha. My balls. So yeah. Long. It's scary that that can happen. Like I don't know. Like he kind of was like one of those guys that like had this like rocket ship kind of trajectory. Like he got really he was famous. hilarious. Yeah. I loved his comedy. And I was then, really disappointed when that came out. And then when a person, I guess, gets that, sometimes the temptation to like, I don't know, you're like, I am the man. My dick's the man. And then just be a creepy asshole. Ugh. Check that ego, huh? Yeah. Power, man. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> uh, so today, do you watch a lot of comedy? Are you like obsessed? You comedy junkie? Lately, or you just like to do it? Lately, I've been really into um, Kill Tony. Oh, yeah. And love Tony Hinchcliffe. You do? Yes. That's cool. Yeah. Tony's got like an asshole persona. Absolutely. But never any Me Too stuff, I don't think. As far Not as that aware. I know of. I mean, he got canceled for a bit for saying really racist stuff against Asians. Right. But. But that was kind of like a. A roast of his friend, I thought, or like a comic yeah. that just got off. Hans, I think it was Hans Kim. Yeah, who's famous from Kill Tony now. Right, but again, and I mean, I can separate the shit out of each other. Yeah, yeah, That's and I can separate the art from the artist to an extent. Yeah, but then, yeah, but yeah, I'm also not Asian, so that didn't affect me personally. Yeah, yeah. Although, stop Asian hate for sure. Stop Asian hate for sure, but uh, I don't know. We roast each other as comics about stuff um yeah like i was just calling you a fat fuck you called me a fat fuck yeah and i was calling you i was speaking of i brought some props you have props yeah i wanted okay so i'm gonna take this out i'm gonna let you guess what it is oh this is I great wanna see the fear in your face oh my gosh <laughs> this is very suspense i have no idea <laughs> Do you know what this is? Uh, an axe? Yes. It's a workout axe. It's, it's a called, workout axe. It's called oh, a chop fit. Oh, I thought it was maybe fit. a cover on the... Uh, it's called a chop fit. A chop fit? Ooh, this two. is pretty heavy. Yeah. This is a great... Ex- this is a free ad for chop fit. I, it's very... Chop underrated. fit. Chop fit. It's great. Do you use these? Absolutely. How I'm so jacked, bro. <laughs> I don't know if the mic's picking you up with the... It's how I'm so jacked, bro. Okay. Ugh. This kind of looks like the hammer of Thor or something. It's so fun. There's so many How often do you use these? <laughs> like every day. Every, every day. <laughs> every day? Yes. Wow. It's so fun. You can do wood choppers. Um, <laughs> you can do like... You can do like squat chops with it. Okay. Yeah, it's so fun. Is there any exercise you can do while sitting down talking? Um, you can like lift them. Okay. I lift. My lats. Um, okay. I kind of. You kinda, work out, bro? Do I do. I kind of want to show you the stupidest thing that I ever bought. Yeah, show me. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it's kind of interesting. Was it the equipment for this podcast? <laughs> no, this is good equipment. How dare you hate on this show? This is this is. That's legit. what offended you. So it's called. Uh, Jawser size? <laughs> Have you seen <laughs> Hold this? On. So For your jaws? Jawser size. They're also not sponsored. I don't know why we got this. But there's no exercise for your for your jaw. And I got paranoid about like having like no like fucking jaw eventually. It's fine now, but I was like, oh. And I also have an oral fixation. So you put this thing nice. in your mouth and you go like this. Can you do that the rest of the podcast? Yeah. I don't <laughs> know if I can understand. That's cool. Me. You look so dumb doing it. <laughs> I mean, if it's fun, it's fun. I mean, you know, I kind of like it. After, Can I like, try it? Just kidding. <laughs> you want to try it? No. I think I have another one that's like unopened. If you want to try it later. Sure. Um, <laughs> it's a communal jaws or size. <laughs> yeah. So what? Like, <laughs> wait, why did you get that? Because you're worried about your jawline or? Well, I just figured, I don't know. I'm at my computer most of the day working from home and I was like. I saw this thing. I've seen it advertised a few times and I was like, huh. And I was like, I, I like my chin and I don't have like turkey neck or anything yet, but 
maybe as a preventative measure, I could get this little twenty dollar thing, and uh, twenty bucks is really expensive for something like that. But and just you know, chop on it. Do you and I also thought maybe it could help me quit vaping because instead of vaping, I could just be like, yeah, do that. That's cool. Mm, I don't know if it's cool. Do you think it's working? Um, well, I just got it like a, two days ago. That so. makes me want to go like, like going in. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> yeah, but apparently there's there's no other way to work out those muscles besides like some resistance as you chew, or you can just eat a lot. I mean that you could just eat a shit ton constantly, and then your jaw like would be chew. amazing, but you'd be fat as hell from neck down. Well, so. you could just throw it up. When I yes. <laughs> so alternative to the jaw exercise, <laughs> you could eat a shit ton of cornbread. Just no, constantly. cornbread is mushy. You don't have to chew it that much. Oh, that's true. What's a really hard food to eat? You could eat like. Mm. I only eat mushy food. You only eat mushy food. <laughs> Do you have soft teeth? <laughs> Probably. No. No, I mean, now I'm all insecure. I'm like, I should try jaws or sizing, whatever. <laughs> Don't be insecure. I'm so insecure all the time. <laughs> like, yeah, a new thing to be insecure about. I'm just How kidding. long have you had those axe things? Um, a while. You're a pretty while. passionate about those to bring I these to the, yes. to the thing. These make me happy. It's a chop fit. Is that all you do to work out using the no, axes? No, no, no. I have like, I go on runs and I have... um. Just like 10 pound dumbbells. Okay. And um, there's this park near where I live where they have like a climbing rope. Oh. And I climb it. I can climb it now. A climbing rope? Yeah. Is it just uh, just straight up like a rope? You just yeah. climb straight up the rope? Or is it like a rope on a wall that you climb up the wall? No, it's like um, there's like a pole. You know those when uh, a park will have outdoor exercise equipment? Uh -huh. They have like the metal poles. Uh -huh. and so it's like just a rope hanging on these metal poles. And I, I learned how to climb it. And that was that was hard. Are there knots in the rope that you can grab onto? No. No? No. Dude, that'd be so hard. It's like in gym class. Yeah, right? I, had to I had to work up to it. Dude. I'm trying to get jacked, bro. I'm impressed you can do that. I don't yeah. think I could. You mm. probably could. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get jacked. I want to get as jacked as possible without needing a gym membership. Okay. Yes, that's my goal. You don't need a gym membership. I think you can just do yeah. body weight exercises. You can probably that's just what do, I do yeah. push ups, sit ups, axes. Chop fit. Chop fit. Chopping. <laughs> do the chop fits come with videos? Yeah. yeah. They have an app. Uh -huh. They have an app with chop fit exercises. There's all sorts of ep exercises. There's squat chops. There's, um, <laughs> you know, and they have they have heavier ones too for, okay. you know, the men. You yeah. know, our, our, our masters who are stronger than us. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I love the chop bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun because I'll be, you know, in between work and, you know, I'm just stuck in my fucking apartment all day. Yeah. And I'll have a couple minutes where it's like, I don't want to stare at this goddamn computer anymore. And I'll just chop for a couple minutes. And yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah. At you ever want to take the chop moment. fit and just take it to your computer? I, yeah, I mean, they're like right there. Yeah. Just so oh, just uh, chop my computer. Yeah, just be like, fuck this. I absolutely yeah. I've had a fantasy about that recently. Not with the chop fit, but I had a fantasy about like because you hate your job. I don't hate it. Sometimes because it gives you money. <laughs> yeah, it gives me money. It's nice, I guess, but oh, the other day, like I, I don't know if I dreamt this or what. <laughs> By the way, why is the past tense of dream is dream dreamt? Why is that? It should be dreamed. Dream. I dreamed that. What's the other? T t t dreamt. Dreamt. Slumped. Slept. I slumped. I slumped. I dreamt. Because uh, English I is a cruel aided. mistress. I, uh, <laughs> whatever. It seems to be like it's the one past weird past tense. I don't know if I dreamed this, but I, I had a fantasy about taking my laptop and my monitors and all of my stuff and throwing it down the garbage disposal. Throwing it down the garbage chute in my building and just being like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm not doing any more. And yeah. And I felt, it felt really good just to fantasize about it. That's why you got to get a chop fit. So I got to get a chop fit. Yeah. You got to just chop in the air. Pretend it's your laptop. Don't actually do it. 
But then, you know, just take a break from your yeah. monitor time. Chop The problem chop with away. the chop fit, I feel like, There's is no problem. you chop need fit something to hit. No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, you don't. Not like, with your imagination. You need, like, some foam, like, Smart. blocks of wood. Like, fake, you know, just, <laughs> <laughs> just take out your anger on it, dude. Yeah. No, I mean, you can just h- use your imagination. Or maybe if I combine just the like jaws are size with the chop fit. And just like, oh, God. That you choke and die. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> I think I have a stress problem, though. I have to wear a yeah, uh, retainer. Uh, did you have braces? Yeah, I did. My teeth moved, though. I'll probably have to get Invisalign. Why don't you wear your retainers? They, I did, but I stopped. No, you got to wear them every night for the rest of your life. Oh. That's my orthodontist told me. Fuck. My retainers are brown, dude. I like they're, yeah, hot. and yeah, pretty hot. And I've chewed through them. Oh no! So they had to give me a new one that's like extra yeah, you thick plastic. Stra- so yeah, you're like you have TMJ or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. TMJ, what's that? Uh, never mind. I don't know what it was. I think it's some something jaw. Total mouth jaw. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 I didn't think I'd get called on it. I thought we'd just keep this going on with the need, conversation. This is why the podcast needs to grow so we can hire a producer. <laughs> what, are we on a podcast right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. This is a dying podcast. <laughs> well, it is kidding. now. It's not that, dying. Now that I'm this on This podcast it. is thriving. Not Jackie, anymore. Jackie Land. Jackie's Jackie a huge, Land. A huge draw. Can you explain for the folks at home what Jackie Land is? Okay. Jackie Land is a magical place. Um, it's a magical dream world that I go to inside my head. <laughs> okay, so imagine there's like coral reef colors, like yep. rich magentas, purples, blues, mm-hmm. um, splashes of, you know, orange and yellow. So it's like a rainbow coral reef backdrop. And it's just fun. Like there's disco balls and dancing and care bears fucking each other. <laughs> and there's weed and there's vodka if you drink vodka i know you don't but yeah, um yeah you know it's just a fun magical place and you know everything i do outside of jackie land is just to support myself and create more time to spend yeah. inside of jackie land inside my own head so that i can get any sort of <clears throat> happiness before the world ends you think and, the world's um, ending i don't know Nah. Not in Jackie Land. Not in Jackie, Jackie Land. Jackie Land is forever. Yes. It's just a fun place where I'm just chopping and <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know, just bouncing chopping. around and dancing. And sometimes people will try to, you know, get me out of Jackie Land by being like, you know, you got to pay this bill or yeah. you got to care about what this person thinks. Or, right. You know, it's just adult shit. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah. Like, that's so not, like, there's so many things that don't go into Jackie Land. Like, war does not belong in Jackie Land. Yeah. Um, no war in Jackie Land. You know, COVID, well, that's not a Jackie COVID's Land <laughs> yeah. thing. Right. Um, you know, there's a uh, cornbread in Jackie cornbread Land. Cornbread in Jackie Land? Yeah, cornbread. I like it. Yeah. This sounds like a great, like, you know, a it's metaphor a, for a, it's a, a dream great world state that of mind. Yeah, it's what I've created to make myself happy. Yes. Yeah. It sounds cool. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever seen South Park? Did you watch South Park? Oh, I love South Park. You heard Park. of Imagination Land? Oh. Imagination. That's what I think of when I think <laughs> yeah, of yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like yeah. not as violent. But well, Imagination like a Land wasn't violent <laughs> until the the bad guys. <laughs> Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. Yeah, Al Qaeda. This was before ISIS. When yeah. Yeah. I watched Imagination Land. Uh, Imagination I allegedly watched that while on acid. Oh, fuck. How <laughs> yeah. did that go? Not bad. Not bad? Not, Not a bad, bad trip? Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Allegedly. Um, and then Man Bear Pig came that. and fucked with Imagination Land. And Al Gore <laughs> had to come save the day. <laughs> Man Bear Pig. Excelsior. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like that. Sometimes I have to think about stuff to uh, de-stress as well. Um, <laughs> the the thing that I think of sometimes right before I like go to sleep or uh, am taking a nap. You ever seen Finding Nemo? Yeah. Just keep swimming. Yeah, just keep swimming. You know when... Um, I can't remember if I talked about this on another episode. Maybe not. But uh, you know when the turtles are like on the the current, whatever that... Uh, yeah. What's the name of the current? I don't know. Okay. There's I don't the, know science. They, like the, the sea turtles are like, what up, dude? They ride the current and they're like in the current. 
Yeah. That's what I visualize as like my life of like, gosh, I got a bunch of shit going on. And I like to like pop out of the current <laughs> and just float and free float. I'll picture myself doing that. Like you don't always have to just be progressing in right. life. Right. Just so pop just... out of the flow and just float in yeah. the middle of the ocean. For like several months at a time. Sorry. Mm-hmm. It sounds so peaceful to me. Yeah. Um, I love swimming. Do you? Me too. It feels so good. Yeah. Are there any good places to swim around here? Um, yeah. I mean, there's there's a bunch of lakes. So, you know, um, uh, I have a friend who has a boat. So sometimes. Of course you do. <laughs> Charlie. Well, no, he, that he's like, that's the only reason we're, fr- I'm just kidding. Charlie's <laughs> amazing. No, Charlie likes to go fish. It's like, it's not like a fancy boat. It's a fishing boat. Although it is a really nice fishing boat. That's awesome. So he likes no, to take that great. out. So swimming in the lake is nice, but there's a pool here and we have people over. Oh, so I hope you invite me one day. I will. <laughs> yeah, Yay. I'll invite you. I'll yeah, take you guys course. to Jackie land. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it a Jackie land party. Exactly. <laughs> But swimming up there is really fun. I remember when it's I first awesome. came here, it was like like at night. Um, it's a very small pool, so it like warms up really nice, so it's not that cold. And I would just jump in and just and just mm-hmm. like just feel the weightlessness and just float. And uh yes. so where where do you prefer to swim? Pool, lake, ocean? I mean, prefer the ocean, but I'm fine with lake or a pool i just love like being encased in water yeah maybe it's like going back to the womb no just kidding uh-huh. it just feels good and i know you're sober but um it is the best sorry i just burped into the mic it is the best um hangover cure you think absolutely i used to do that university of denver they have an olympic size swimming pool mm-hmm. i used to be hungover as fuck and i would just go swim laps and it's just because i i get bad body aches when i'm hungover Mm -hmm. but it just god it's so soothing yeah like cold water so you would actually swim laps yeah wow yeah yeah i was a little too lazy to actually do laps or swim i'll do a little bit but then i just kind of want to float or yeah well i like to get goggles too and go to the bottom of the pool and just hang out down there do you ever do that no. No? Not as a kid even? Like with like those little sinkers that you can go down and dive the for? The little glow stick looking thing? Yeah. Yeah, I did do, you did did do, that? do that as a kid. Yeah. yeah. That was like my favorite thing. I was a, uh, as grandkids, like our grand, my grandpa and grandma put in a pool for us to all play in as we grew up. Aww. We got so much fun out of that thing. But yeah, as, I love to di- go down and have your ears pop a little bit. And just, I was like, man, it's peaceful down here. Yeah. It's very chill. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I love swimming. That's great. Yeah. You'll have to let me know. Yeah. I love swimming. Um, we would also go in college too. That was a really nice thing after football practice. Cause like we'd oh, be all yeah. bruised and stuff. And then we go in there. We used to go in and just go in the hot tub and the girls had swimming practice at the same time and nice. we weren't looking at them, but then Eventually, the swim coach was like, guys, you got to wait till after we're done practicing. So, so eventually we had to, whatever. Yeah. But. So I could, the <laughs> swim coach was like, so I could have them all to myself. Maybe. Yeah, maybe <laughs> he was the creepy one. I don't know. Maybe I had some this, of the guys. I don't know. I didn't have this teacher, but there was this one French teacher in high school. Who in between classes, he would just like stand in front of his classroom, just like post it up and like stare at the girls walking by. It was a French it teacher? It was a known thing. Yeah. A known thing that he was a creep. Did he ever get reported? Absolutely not. Why not? It was Alabama. Oh. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, they don't. And yeah. No. Okay. And I'm so sorry. I'm like. And we were asking for it. You right. Know? Exactly. <laughs> I'm so all over the place going no, through I'm your all background. No, I'm place. Because you had Alabama, Denver, Alab- White Plains. And now here. Yeah. Is that right? Is that all of them? Yes. Okay. So you spent most of your childhood in Alabama growing up there? Yeah. There were three random years that I lived in Florida from age 12 to 15. Okay. Which that age range is known as a woman's prime in Florida. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Wait, what age? (laughs) 12 to 15. Oh my gosh. (laughs) That was was a weird time. uh, (laughs) I was born in Alabama, uh, lived in Florida for three years, and then I went back to Alabama, graduated high school there. Then I went to Denver, then New York. Which city in Alabama? 
I was born in Montgomery, Alabama, okay. which is where the civil rights movement started. That's where Rosa Parks stayed oh, on the bus. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then I graduated high school in Birmingham, Alabama, which okay. is like, if you're going to live anywhere in Alabama, Birmingham's pretty. Yeah. Big high school. I think it's not huge. Vestavia Hills High School. So our, our mascot was a Confederate rebel. Ha. <laughs> I think they <laughs> just changed it. Okay. John Oliver actually gave us a shout out oh, yeah? for that. Um, <laughs> John Oliver. But yeah, I mean, Vestavia Hills High School, it wasn't, it was, I think, like a blue ribbon school. It was a good mixture. Blue ribbon? What's that mean? I think there I'm was idiot, there were some smart kids there. That's what it meant. Oh, so it has like an advanced curriculum for some kids? Yeah. Okay. But it, it was a good mixture. Were you mixture. one of the smart kids? Yeah, I was really book smart. Nice. Yeah. No street smarts. But yeah, I um, <laughs> I had like a four point three. Holy GPA. shit! Yeah. Look at you. Were then, you valedictorian? No, at 4. I 3? was. No, but I was um in college. I was cum laude. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've always been like a really good test taker, uh-huh. good at writing papers. But standardized tests? How were you? I made like a thirty-two on the ACT. Oh my gosh. I got a 29. You're smarter than oh, me. Oh, nice. 29 yeah. and playing football? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's great. Well, I was I was like try hard book smart. Yeah. So I, I just had this obsession with getting A's. So I got all A's. With getting A's? A's. <laughs> getting A's. I was obsessed with getting A's. <laughs> Dude, me I too. Just, that was my life Girl, goal. Was to get A's was all the rage. I wanted to get all the A's. All the A's. All the I A's. I wanted to like create new A's with the A's I got. Right. I wanted to... So Go above AIDS. and beyond and get like a new AIDS that was like, like a new accessory. Worse than the old AIDS. <laughs> you got the nineteen eighties strain of AIDS, girl. That's w- so nineteen yeah. eighties. <laughs> I was born in the eighties, so you know. I was you like, were. why not continue and get AIDS so many as AIDS. an eighties baby? <laughs> AIDSies. AIDSies, eighties, <laughs> AIDSies. Whatever, baby. No. AIDS. AIDS. AIDS everybody. <laughs> AIDS. Um, AIDS, no, AIDS, but AIDS. I got all eight, but I standardized test. I <laughs> sucked at. I got a 24 on the ACT the first time I took it, that's and I was like, like, good. That's like I'm good. hanging myself. That's not good. You understand that mindset, though, of like needing to get that score, yeah, yeah. or else your identity and your sense of yes, self worth is exactly. shattered. My identity was based purely in my parents putting a test on the refrigerator of like yeah i can relate because um like as a little little kid like i was bullied a lot for like my weight and being weird and being ugly but as yeah as a like a little little kid i was always still really good at school and so being able to get good uh good grades and doing well at school that was like my one I don't know, bastion of like self-worth and self-esteem. Yep. And so I carried that through like high school and college of like, I have to make A's, I have to make A's. Mm -hmm. And then after college, when it becomes less about your grades and more about making money, um, you know, I found myself running into certain intellectual challenges like with work and feeling like, like with copywriting. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. been so, you know, there have been difficulties where I'm like, where I feel my intelligence being questioned. And then I had to have this question by your bosses or like based yeah, on the copy you wrote. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or, you know, not doing enough research or just not understanding and feeling like my intelligence was being questioned. Well, how much of that was just like normal, like feedback based on being a new copywriter versus like oh. them questioning your actual intelligence? Absolutely. Cause it was a normal curve feedback, for... but because me feeling like okay me being smart yeah was the one thing i had for so long yeah once that was actually challenged because school you know i mean writing papers and taking tests professors don't even check that shit yeah if you're good enough at it you can kind of breeze through yeah but then when it comes to actually making money it's 
you know, and the pro- if the copy just isn't good, yeah, then they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna critique you. you for it. Yeah, and I felt that like that could be hard on you. Yeah, and then I had to kind of have this come to Jesus moment of like, why am I so emotional about this? And I realized, oh, it comes back to childhood, of when I was bullied a lot. The only thing I had was my intelligence. Yep. And I feel like the one thing I had is being questioned. Then I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm good. Yeah. I just had to have that realization for sure. Yeah. Um, were you able to get over it immediately when you understood where it came from? Um, it ha- Yeah. Uh, the realization definitely helped. And then I reached out to my bosses and I was like, I'm having work related anxiety. I feel like I'm fucking up. Yeah. And they were really cool about it. What did they say? Like, no, you're doing great. Like, yeah, they were like, look, like you're not everyone, not every, you know, ad is supposed to be a hit. Like, right. it, and yeah you know i mean it's just i'm just insecure for sure you know and i i i deal with my insecurity by being very upfront about it like the second i pretend to be confident or pretend to be secure with myself that's when everything can fall apart okay but i'm just straight up like i'm yeah. fucked up <laughs> yeah. you know and that's i think maybe that's a defense mechanism or maybe it's a. no i think that's the good. right instinct isn't it to just be honest about what you're i think so yeah no, I feel very similarly like uh, having that, you know, perfectionism as a kid. And uh, when I started working, um, you know, I was able to do well the first job I had, but then I got into sales and sales was really weird for me because there's a lot of failure in sales, but I guess I didn't, I don't know. It bothered me when a customer said no, but at my company, your boss doesn't see that happen. So like I wasn't like crushed necessarily. I could kind of hide in my little, in my car, like, you know, um, and it wouldn't be a big deal. Like as long as I sold enough to hit my numbers, but then now I have a different job now where like that's more highly visible. And, uh, I think now I'm okay with failure because I do comedy because you fail all the time and it's okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I remember, um, getting feedback i hated getting feedback because if it was negative i'd be like oh that's a that's a critique on me as a person not like on just the work yeah and it really fucked with me like it's it's a process of letting go of that and comedy helps with that but i think um anyone who's in any sort of line of work where feedback is necessary just remember that the goal for the project is not to impress your boss is to get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. That was a thing when I'd be writing ad copy and I'd be like, Oh my God, what is my boss going to think about this? And then I remembered it's not, it's about helping people, not Mm -hmm. about impressing my boss. For sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. And corporate, it's so easy to fall into that trap of like, not even just your boss, but your peers, like, um, are, how are, what are they going to think of me if I express this opinion, even like on a call or something, yeah. like if you speak up and nobody says anything It's like, Oh shit, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have said that. Or like, how are like, I want, I just want to be liked by everybody. That's like a, mm. <laughs> if you try to be liked by everybody, that's a good recipe for like either stagnating or failing, uh, in a big way. Absolutely. You won't have any value unless you have like your own opinion. Yeah. You know? But yeah, no, I mean, wanting to be liked is just, that's I want to be back. liked so bad. Yeah, me too. Do you? Oh my God. Absolutely. Yeah. I crave yeah. it. Yeah. I need it. Yeah. I want to be liked, but I want to be myself. And then, you, but you don't even know who you are if you just want to be liked. So it's honestly better to polarize people to where if someone doesn't vibe with you, like get them like let them know who you are Mm -hmm. from the very get go. So they know to fuck off. Yeah. You know, and I've, I mean, I've noticed that I'm definitely not for everyone. (laughs) And so (laughs) fuck you for laughing. (laughs) But it's like some people really like me and some people just do not vibe with me. And that's great. You know, and that's also part of marketing of you want to detract your non ideal customer you know, mm-hmm. you want to, from the very first line, let the person that isn't going to buy from you know to fuck off. Yeah. You know, you it, and there's actually um, this famous marketing god, uh, Dan Kennedy, has some line that's like, if you haven't pissed someone off by noon, then you're not working. Mm. And it's just true. I mean, 
Yeah. But yeah, I'm working on it of like not caring as much if people like me. <laughs> yeah, everybody should do that. I think it's it's kind of become I don't know. I feel like in recent years it's gotten more uh uh, like they they came out with that art, that book, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Like it's more in the mainstream now of like be your own person and who cares what people think. Um, but it's that interesting tension of like also social media. Like you're validated by the likes that you get. So there's like be your own person, but also oh. you have that pressure to like you know have it be well received by everybody but here's the thing about social media though it's like do not try to encapsulate your entire identity versus via social media post Mm -hmm. because it it will always be insufficient there is no first of all the more you try to define your identity the less it exists you know you ever have someone ask you tell me about yourself and your mind goes blank because you're trying to tell you want to tell them everything about who you are david as a human being yeah but that is impossible because you don't even know everything about you so do not it is just just post the post the video the picture the meme whatever it is never going to be sufficient enough to express everything that you are because you are too complicated to explain to yourself or anyone else especially on social media it's true. But the people who are successful on social media have successfully created the farce of like, oh, I think I have an idea who this person is. It's like, no, you fucking don't. They don't even know who they are. Yeah. It's too complicated. Right. So, you know, it's just content. There's a difference between content versus who you are as a yeah. person. How do you feel about social media content? Um, maybe as it relates to comedy. Like, what is the... Uh appropriate amount of content creation what's cringe like what's not what's uh who i mean maybe people who do it well versus people who are you don't like i mean just put whatever content you want out there yeah you know i mean i mean i guess you said you want to do comedy for fun so yeah um i'll be honest the reason why i put content out there mm -hmm. um so that i i don't care if I ever make a lot of money from mm-hmm. comedy. I just want to get successful enough so that everyone who has ever wronged me ends up deeply regretting it. Because <laughs> <laughs> fuck those guys. Well, it sounds like you want to make money in comedy then. I don't know. Because that would be a really good fuck you if you made like millions of dollars doing comedy and be like, oh my gosh, that's Jackie. Yeah. I shouldn't have gave her shit. It's a power play. It goes back to power. I don't, I'm not in it for the money, David. I'm yeah. in it for the power. I'm in it for the power. <laughs> but, um, okay, Crystalia. Oh, God. <laughs> get some guys My to brand themselves for you. Yeah, <laughs> get some. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just out into the void. Yeah. Just put, post whatever content you want. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, if it's like, if you like racist it. or fucked up, like, fuck you. Uh, Deal with the consequences of it. Yeah, for sure. You know, but I, I just like to to share stuff to show i mean because it's just it's fun Mm -hmm. you know and just oh my god like and i surprise myself sometimes where it's when you create content and you look at what you've created and you're like oh my god that came from me yeah it's fun to surprise yourself yeah but i know who i really am like i know how pathetic and how much of a loser i truly am Mm -hmm. that doesn't match up with the laughs i get in this tiktok yeah but that's cool Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah, do you have any, do you have anxiety right before you hit post? No, I can always delete it. Oh, no that's one's true. gonna save it. That's true. No one's gonna save it. I don't do I get I get post anxiety. I'm like, ah That's because you were trying to encapsulate everything in one post. No. Am I? Fuck. That means I am. That means I'm trying to encapsulate. I feel like I feel like that's where a lot of anxiety comes from. It's like, is this post enough to to express who I am? No, no one will ever know. Well, I feel like my anxiety comes from I feel like this post is a is a little slice of who I am and I don't really want to show it and have people not like it. <laughs> Like, this is me, but oh. you're hilarious. No, shut up. Thank you. I love how you come off Thank so bashful, and then you just talk about like awful you shit. Talk shit about cancer survivors <laughs> and abortion and whatnot. I'm like, spoiler, go off, David. Spoiler. <laughs> oh man, yeah, because like 
it doesn't make sense, you know? So I think people need to stop trying to make sense of themselves, especially through social media. Yeah. Especially through content. Yeah. It is one billionth of an iota of who you are. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's just something you can do for fun. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, yeah, I try to look at it like that. And the, the podcast is, is very fun. Like, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. What's well, yeah. fun to make? I mean, I don't know. I didn't. I stopped asking myself why I'm doing it a long time ago and just says, I'm just going to do it and stop asking. <laughs> Kept you from killing yourself. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's fun to make and like whatever happens, happens is kind of cool. Would you ever make a podcast? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe like the Jackie, the Jackie Land podcast. Jackie, welcome to Jackie Land. Jackie Land. Jackie that, Land. Yeah. No, I could see that. I could see like, you know, I've seen some uh, podcasts by girls like where they have a really fun backdrop. You could have all the Jackie Land colors. Absolutely. Candy and acid. And dildos. Dildos and whips and axes chains and, and rainbows. and AIDS. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> just everything, dude. That'd be perfect. I love it. I'm just chopping. Yeah. Here's chopping a, here's AIDS. Here's my, my problem with podcasts, though. Is because of the audio, you can't move around a lot. And I do like to talk and walk. Yeah. Yeah, I do like to move around a lot. Well, I've, I've thought of uh, an idea for a podcast. You want to hear it? <laughs> do tell. Somebody might steal it. No. <laughs> so the idea is you get like mobile mics so you can move around. And um, you go to an amusement park. And you, you talk while you're standing in line. And then you have GoPros on the whole time. So like every so often, every half hour or so, you're on a new roller coaster and you're like, oh shit, but everything's captured. And like, it's like a conversation for most of it, but then there's actually change of scenery with the video you're getting. It's and so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Should do that. Do you like that idea or are you just Absolutely. Me? Yeah. Because um, I love amusement parks. I'm mm -hmm. deathly afraid of heights, but I love the thrill of a roller yeah. coaster. So I'll be like, do you like, do you ride them? Do you go on yes. them no matter what? Like, even if you're scared? Yes. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm like crying and freaking out. And then afterwards, mm -hmm. I'm like, that's so fun. Yeah. It's just so good to feel something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. It's a great idea. Yeah. You're full of them. Dude, I have another one. Do I hear another one? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so. Um, I, I I told Bill this one before. Who's it's, Bill? It's, uh, <laughs> who's kidding. Bill? Yeah. He's the cum guy. He's the cum guy. He's just always on your podcast talking about cum. cum? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing I've I've retained from your podcast is just Bill Ryder Bill. talking about cum. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love Bill. I want him to come on all the time. He's hilarious. Uh huh. Yeah. So the idea is pranks before the internet. And you could get in trouble with this, but like record doing pranks that are like that we would do in the 90s. I'm older than you. I'm pretty sure a lot. I'm not sure how. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, I'm so on. young. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, doing stuff like we would put stuff in front of cars like uh, at night that they'd run over it. Like we'd take like yeah, stuff like out of kittens. the recycle bin out of our garages <laughs> and we'd go like to a busy street and like put like cans of like. You know, those big cans of peaches, you know, like industrial, fill it with water. Okay. Or we put cones and stuff. Oh. This is like illegal, so. Allegedly, that's what you did. Yeah. Or throwing stuff off buildings and stuff. Yeah, like okay, watermelons. Okay, this probably wouldn't work, but. Watermelons onto cars. <laughs> Have you done that? No. Have you done it? No, I haven't. I no? Haven't. I haven't. I'm a little bitch. <laughs> I'm a little bitch. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Okay, so maybe this wouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We made a gun out of a mechanical pencil. and It shot staples. So you took the lead out of a mechanical pencil and take the cone off. And then you wedge a staple <laughs> in the in the little fourth grader's eyes. And then you pull back <laughs> on the eraser. And you could just like be chilling and just... <laughs> and shoot the, yeah yeah i'm try glad you him, never try to get him in the eye <laughs> i'm glad you never advanced to more serious school shooting <laughs> tactics no never school shooting uh <laughs> oh one time we took a bunch of, we'd take milk cartons we'd drink half of them and then we'd hide them in the ceiling tiles oh you fucks <laughs> a poor janitor and then after a few months like there'd just be this smell and be like what is that smell like be, be so evil it. you little shit <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> I used to put googly eyes on things. Oh yeah. Yeah. On that's a cute. That's a cute little. Just one. make little faces. Like uh, you know. Marcel the shell. Have you ever seen that thing? No. I oh, haven't. never mind. Marcel the shell. Just googly eyes. That was like a little stop motion film. What pranks did you do besides? Did you do anything? There was um. Do you know Exhibit from Pimp My Ride? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, one time at the DU library, there was like this sign um in like a glass case that was like Exhibit coming soon. Uh huh. And it was there for months, and I posted um a picture of ex- Exhibit, and it said Exhibit here. I don't know stuff like that. <laughs> I like harmless <laughs> with eggs. A- yeah, eggs. Because it's from Pit My Ride. Did and you it was make a his face an egg? No, no, no. It's exhibit. I didn't mean eggs, but you know, exhibit from Pit My Ride. I did a picture of him, and then the text said exhibit here. Oh, I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. At the library, it's funnier when I have to explain it. But yeah, like, yeah. I like harmless pranks. You know, yeah. just googly eyes on things and just taping memes on the things. Yeah. But I'm I'm such a little bitch. Like I I hate having to deal with like authority or cops or yeah, we ever were, getting in trouble. Yeah, we were kind of terrorists with ours. Yeah, a little bit low level. But exactly oh my gosh, like I'm not gonna ISIS. lie. Seeing a car hit a piece of trash that you put out there was the most exhilarating feeling as a child. Nice. I just oh, I remember one. Gosh, I remember this. Our parents didn't know we were. Yeah. We just said we were playing somewhere, but I remember like a paint can got wedged underneath the car when we saw the sparks fly. We were like, oh, oh. <laughs> we got it. yeah, you got it. <laughs> I'm glad that it never caused any like serious damage or accident. Yeah, I don't think it did. That's yeah, fine. that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Not, I used to pick up cool. trash for fun back in pick New York. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. talked about this on stage recently. It's 100 percent true. Yeah, I was a litter picker. Yeah, and you said all the New Yorkers didn't care. Oh my god! About your efforts. No, that New Yorkers hate nature. They would yeah. pass by a patch of grass and like be like too pretty and throw a pizza <laughs> box on it. And I was just like, I had my, I had a claw and everything. I picked up dozens and dozens of bags of trash along the yeah. Bronx River Parkway. Yeah. And the looks I got, I got a couple thank yous, but it was mainly like, "You're fucking crazy, bitch." Yeah. Did you have yeah. a vest on? It what? like you were a convict picking up stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I mean, it's just people are so confused. Yeah. I did that to just, uh, honestly, I did that in response to Roe v. Wade being overturned. I was like, okay, I'm going to turn off the news and do whatever I can to try to do some good in this fucked up world. <laughs> and I didn't make a dent. Didn't make a dent. I'd pick up dozens of, bag of bags of trash, go to that same corner. There'd be more trash yeah. <laughs> the next day. Yeah. <laughs> But I was just, I don't know. Once I did that, I was like, okay, I tried. I'm going to just yeah. go Too vibe pretty. and be selfish. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But who yeah. knows? Somebody has a joke that New York City is one giant piece of litter. Like, it's just. It's, Dude. Yeah. It's not natural. It's just. A, it's a Times Square is like the opposite of nature. Yeah. It's, a, I mean, as someone in, who likes marketing and advertising, mm-hmm. I think it's really cool. But it is literally the opposite of nature. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, if I were like rich, rich, I could see myself going to the city again because uh-huh. the architecture is so cool. Yeah. Um, but God, unless you're like just crazy rich, it's just yeah. really hard to exist and enjoy yeah. yourself there. But If you could have your perfect setup, what would it be? Like a corner apartment in Manhattan? Like a couple small houses and just float around yeah you know i gotcha mm. yeah. yeah i don't i love new york city but the last time i visited you, you just went yeah right? i just went to see louis oh cool um you fucking traitor i know i know he's a bad person i hope he jizzed in your eye <laughs> <laughs> he I gave you the old fa- magoo far away he got the front row but i was pretty far ah so uh, but uh, <laughs> you weren't in the splash zone. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the splooge zone. They handed out goggles to the people. Why'd you even the, go at that he point? Was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want the goggles. <laughs> I'm ready to receive you. Oh my god! Give I me your as, DNA. <laughs> I, might as, I might as well say that I talk about him enough on this damn thing. <laughs> I just love him so much. <laughs> His art. I don't know him personally, but uh, I was like intimidated by Manhattan. 
I was like overwhelmed. I was like, dude, I'm I'm too old to fuck with this. Like, yeah. Um, in terms of living in the city, I was like, dude, I am nothing here. Like the the anonymity and like the just the amount of like no friends and like building a friend group from scratch in that environment, just like with the hustle and bustle and the the noise and shit. And like, I was like, oh my gosh. I don't know. I feel like there's two, I don't know, there's two different lenses of seeing New York. Mm-hmm. Like if you're like super rich and you've, if you've made it there, you see it through rose colored glasses where it's like, it's like you're in that show Sex in the City where there's all the, all the brownstones look like, you know, it's like a movie set Yeah. versus if you haven't made it and in, you're in New York, it's like fucking misery yeah you know and i was kind of somewhere in between and Uh i'm a i'm a very sensitive gal like (laughs) you know i'm super sensitive and so yeah i could not make it there so you can't make it anywhere you can make it in greenville (laughs) (laughs) thanks i was quoting the sinatra song you can make it there you can make it but you couldn't so no, I couldn't. I feel like I didn't even live in the city though. I cheated. No. I lived in you, White Plains. You, yeah, you made it in White Plains. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I was totally kidding about not being able to make it there. You could make it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm it's, just vibing now. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, just vibing. How how do you feel about Greenville? Three you know three months. I love it. Does it feel like? I mean, maybe it's too early to know for sure. But I do wish there was more places to like dance. Yeah. And listen to music. Like I wish there were more like live bands. Uh huh. But the mics are great. Yeah. It's great to have several mics. Uh The downtown is beautiful. Yeah. I love. Um. You know, it's southern people, but they're pretty liberal. Which I like. I'm a yeah. liberal southerner. You're a liberal southerner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also work from home, so that helps. Mm-hmm. Have you been to Smiley's yet? No, I need to go. Because they have live music and they have a bunch of like cougar. I heard they're like a swingers bar. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a bunch of swinger You're types. Right up my alley. do the dance. Really? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a whore. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. no 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 but they have live band karaoke and just live bands there a lot yeah and it's a cool vibe i love greenville mm-hmm. i like it yeah I, I like it a lot too and i think it's like a nice place for people who didn't grow up here like if you grow up here i feel like you kind of had the itch to leave but like i kind of want to be here long term you know? yeah i could see myself i wish i was if i was fucking ready to buy a house right now just to invest yeah holy fuck in yeah five to ten years that shit's gonna yeah explode in value for sure and there's good spots outside of greenville like the radius of it is like yes it's super expensive like close to downtown but it keeps kind of expanding out and there's really nice developments getting put up like yeah and i think it's gonna keep going until it engulfs spartanburg you know and like i don't know i think this is a hot spot yeah, I hope more cities like Greenville develop all around the south because mm-hmm. they're starting to get overpopulated, especially like Nashville. Yeah. You know, I think there needs to be a lot more Greenvilles. I think it's it, man. I think yeah. Greenville is the shit. Absolutely. Because a lot of these other big cities are kind of on the decline. Yeah. It seems like. And I don't want to hate on Denver, but I was there pretty recently. Denver seems to be kind of in a bad spot. I don't know if you yeah. agree. When I left, I, I left during the pandemic mm-hmm. and outside like the Capitol building, there were just blocks of like tent cities. Yeah. Yeah. It was still like that when you went. Yeah. Well, I don't, um, I don't know about the tent cities, but I remember I, I, I was there for a work meeting and I came in on like a Sunday night and we didn't have meetings until like late Monday afternoon. So I was walking around on a Monday morning and I was just like all the homeless people yeah it was sad. sunny and stuff but they were i mean they seemed happy i mean they were just chilling but like i was Didn't, like bro <laughs> like this is not the denver i remember not the denver i remember mm-hmm. uh the denver homeless people are like a different breed of homeless yeah how would you describe them uh a lot more forward i think they have like Aggressive. their whole ecosystem their whole economy there's like a homeless economy yeah there um but yeah it's fucked up. Bold homeless people. Yeah. yeah, very bold. They'd like run up to my car and I'd be like, don't, don't come up to my car. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. I saw a guy <laughs> on a motorcycle trouble. get in a fight with a guy in a Jeep. Yeah. It was like he cut him off or something at this intersection. 
and then the guy in the Jeep like stuck his head out the window and then it was like, fuck you, dude. And then the guy revved his engine and revved it so loud. Yeah. He was like, oh, you're cool, bro. I bet your dick's so big, bro. Like, and then yeah, it, let me suck it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet your cup it tastes this, great. It was this really intense <laughs> confrontation. I was like. Yeah, you see some weird shit. Denver is honest. Like Colorado is kind of like the Florida of the West. Yeah, is it? It really is. It's a weird mix of people. Uh huh. So like liberal and conservative in the worst ways yeah. like you'll someone will walk up to you and they'll be like a fucking stoner but also a trump supporter and it's like yeah. how are you how do you hit a bong and you're like yep still racist like how uh, is that <laughs> not all trump supporters are racist no, though, no, but I mean, I don't. yeah i don't know it's a weird combo yeah it is you know stoner but there's some trump cool supporter. people in denver but you just never know what you're gonna get yeah yeah it can be sketch yeah um well, Do David, you have to go? Yeah, I got to go. Oh, I have to go too, probably. Yeah, you got to go hit that mic in Asheville, but right? But have we talked about everything? I don't know. Yeah, we talked about plenty. Really? You yeah, think? yeah. Um, What's your favorite commercial? Ooh, I really like Pepto-Bismol. Uh-huh. Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, indigestion upset, upset stomach, stomach diarrhea. diarrhea. That's like a really, that is so iconic. A pepto Also, there's this, I don't remember the the car but there's this one car commercial that it associates some paralympic athlete mm -hmm. with them i like the heart where i i can't even describe it but it was like some some kid who was getting adopted what didn't have legs okay. and that her parents were like yeah we'll take her and then she ended up being a famous swimmer and they associated it with like kia or something <laughs> it had nothing to do with the car so it was toyota it was a toyota commercial about a a, par a paralympic athlete who was adopted by her parents when she didn't have legs and, and that's a weird message it's incredible like, you don't it's pro it has, adoption has nothing to do with toyota an olympian oh that's kind of that helps it's like i'll take you if you don't up. have legs but yeah you better learn how to swim good mm. <laughs> Uh, do you like Geico commercials? I. Or do you think they're bad? Do you think they're cheesy? I mean, insurance companies, no offense, are the devil. Uh -huh. And I think Geico at least has the decency to not try to pretend like they give a fuck about us. They're like, like all state, they're like, oh, you're in good hands. We'll protect you. We give yeah. a fuck about you. Geico's yeah. like, here's a talking lizard. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know that you're going to get fucked by us. Here's the thing about insurance is <laughs> you're going to get fucked either way, yeah. but you're going to get fucked harder if you don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. And yeah, insurance companies are the fucking devil. So at least have the decency not to yeah. lie to me. I so hate, I like Geico. I hate State Farm commercials. Uh. With with I, even Aaron Rodgers. I like Aaron Rodgers, but with Patrick Mahomes and and then they made Jake from State Farm a different guy. I thought that was dumb. Yeah. Like, like that was pandering. It's all pandering. I mean, the original Jake was like this chubby dude who was David, just I got to be honest with you. What? I'm about to pee my pants. <laughs> I don't have anything happening. It's just I need this podcast to end because I'm about to piss all over your couch. This is a problem. Okay. I'm so I felt like sorry. we could have talked longer. I hope I didn't. We could have. I hope I didn't talk too much. The, I don't know. No, you were great. Right. I, I You I were just, great. It's just I've had a rough day, you know. You were you were great. This, this was is, a this great okay. conversation. I don't care if you post this or not. I no, we're gonna post it. You're this gonna post gonna be, it? Yeah, of course. This went well. This we talked went about really well. This went really well. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't want it to end with me pissing all over your couch. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna end this. We should shout out some things. What do you want to shout out? Oh, okay. Jackie so Land. my Instagram, I post full sets on um, Welcome to Jackie Land. That's my Instagram. And then my TikTok is at Sadness Factory, like Sadness Factory. Like I'm a factory that produces sadness. Excellent. So that should be fun. Uh, that's where I do clips. Welcome to Jackie Land. I do full sets. Yes. Um, but mostly you should just watch this podcast. For sure. This is where the real content no, is here. Follow Jackie stuff. Jackie, you're hilarious. So Thank funny. You. Seriously. I think you I have great I wait, taste. I waited till now to say that. I should have said I'll say it at the beginning again. But uh yeah. I uh your venting style of like just yeah. It's 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 on the sleeve, like the emotions on the sleeve. It's it's great. Uh I love it. So yeah. Follow Jackie. She's awesome.
Thank you, David. And um, do you have a YouTube channel? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. No. Coming soon. And the podcast coming soon. Jackie. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. Go to the bathroom. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks.